it was the challenge of a lifetime. Documenting the sinking of the nation's second largest artificial reef. Before it was decommissioned, the USS General Hoyt S. Vandenberg served the United States military for more than half a century, first as a troop transport during World War II, then later as a missile tracking vessel during the space race and the Cold War. On May 27, 2009, the Vandenberg was towed to just above its final resting place, 140 feet of seawater seven miles off the coast of Key West. For producer photographer Steve Panarello, the obstacles were frequent and abundant. For starters, he'd never documented the creation of an artificial reef. A career in photojournalism hadn't prepared him for what was about to happen. Steve was responsible for shooting the Vandenberg scuttling from a helicopter orbiting the site. That was the easy part. The real challenge was designing, setting up, mounting and triggering four underwater HD cameras to document the event from the ship's deck in real time, then successfully recovering the video from the ocean depths and transmitting it to Miami television news media. Since I've been in the industry for 23 years as a cameraman exclusively, um, I've come to see a lot of situations over and over and over again. It's rare that I find a situation that I haven't experienced on some level before, and it's very rare to find experience a situation that I haven't experienced and no one I know that's a cameraman has, has experienced. I started making phone calls, I started doing searches online, could find no answers. So I had to start from scratch. Once I realized I needed to figure this out from scratch, it led the door open for me to start thinking that way and say, okay, what do I have to do? I have to mount a camera securely to a ship and I have to mount it so it's easily removable. Ordinarily, Steve would prefer a couple months to prepare for a shoot like this but they didn't know they would be responsible for capturing images of the scuttling from the ship's deck until 12 days before it was scheduled to sink. So there was an extremely narrow window in which to plan and execute the production. There is no off-the-shelf mount made to hold a camera in an underwater housing to a ship that's going to explode and sink. I went and surveyed the ship. We took hours to pick the correct locations. We chose two to four camera angles. We figured out where we were going to put the cameras. And then for each location where we were going to choose to put a camera, we had to choose a mounting solution. I thought about, well, what, what forces are going to be present? This is not just um, sinking a camera underwater like a diver would. This was a ship exploding, vibrating, and then going down with unknown pressure involved and having the camera rolling from above the water to below the water. This mount is essentially a shock absorber. Once I started thinking of it that way, it actually became easier for me to decide how to build this. I started thinking about ways to absorb shock. How, does, how is shock absorbed? Well, you can't dampen it too quick. If you dampen it too quick, you have no shock absorption and you break things. If you dampen it too slow, there's too much movement and shaking and that, that results in a very unusable camera shot. So, one of the reasons I devised this mount to be uh, the way it is, is that I wanted a certain amount of vibration resistance. If I had to manufacture a mount professionally that was going to be for the job of, of mounting an expensive, heavy underwater camera to a ship that was going to explode and sink, it wouldn't be too much different than this, except it would be prettier. The last-minute job request posed many difficult challenges. Four different cameras and four different underwater housings had to be attached to four different locations aboard the ship. There uh, used to be a railing right here, just like this one, but we had it burnt away and removed by uh, someone with a torch that was working on the ship. Camera mounts had to be designed and constructed to withstand the concussion of 44 cutting charges, as well as the 30,000 cubic feet of air vented from the ship every second on the way down. And this camera is a bow camera. It's uh, mounted on the bow, looking back at the bridge of the ship. And uh, as you go down, you expect maybe to be level or the aft end first. So this will be a really nice shot. It'll last a long time. We'll see water come up the deck. Um, it's going to be solid up here with these mounts. While the camera mounts had to be extremely strong to withstand the pressure and vibration, they had to be easily removable by an underwater dive team. These mounts, although ugly, were very effective in taking up the shock and vibration that was present on the ship when it sunk and exploded. They were also very easily removable via these thick bolts with giant wing nuts on the bottom. 
which a diver could easily, even with gloved hands, take off. Once the diver had the wing nuts off, the whole mount on the camera would lift off and go to the surface. Because of security concerns, the cameras had to be mounted, loaded, and ready to go 36 hours prior to detonation. That meant leaving the equipment on board for two days, exposed to the blistering heat and volatile weather. Because the Vandenberg would be rigged from stem to stern with explosive charges, activating the equipment by remote control was not an option. The cameras had to be triggered by a member of the demolition team, not a photographer. That meant not only training an operator to flip the switch, but designing a startup protocol that was virtually foolproof. Because insurance wouldn't cover the project, Digital Island would have to find volunteers to donate equipment on short notice. I had four people's cameras that I was responsible for. I had four cameras that I didn't own, that could not be insured, and that um, needed to come back with footage that night. And to top it all off, Steve had no one to turn to for advice. Pleas for help around the world went unanswered because so few people had done what he was about to attempt. We only have 12 days. There's not a lot of time for error. The first thing I did was got online to my, to my favorite professional forums and put a call out. Anyone have experience with putting cameras on a ship that's going to explode and sink? 48 hours went by and it was crickets. As the only pool camera, Digital Island Media had only one shot to get it right. At 10.21 on the morning of May 27th, the Vandenberg met its date with destiny. It took less than two minutes for the 523-foot ship to slip beneath the surface and settle into its new home, but it would be another six hours until the Digital Island team learned that their efforts were successful. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, oh, doing. yeah, baby. Dive. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah! 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 <laughs> they were. Digital Island Media provided not only the first video of the Vandenberg scuttling, but the first still images as well. Their content was uploaded and beamed to all six Miami television stations within minutes, and eventually dozens of broadcast and cable TV networks around the globe. It's funny, after being in the business for a lot of years, I realized that it's the tough jobs that have the biggest payoffs. So when, when we got the call to do this, I knew it was going to be hard. I knew it was going to be a lot of sleep lost, and I knew that if we did it right, this was going to be really fun and exciting for us. And luckily, um, the fun and excitement did come, and, and, and it came in two waves on the, on the day of the sinking. The one, first wave was when the cameras came back to shore alive. They had run, they had recorded, there was no battery left, there was no tape left. They'd run their full length as they were designed to, and there was no water in the housings. So it withstood extreme vibration and pressure, didn't break, didn't open, and not only that, but recorded. The next big exciting moment for, for me was seeing the reaction of all the people gathered in the media room as the footage was played from the underwater cameras. And as, the sh as, as we played the footage and the water rose on the ship, people's excitement just got to such a level where I knew I was, I was good at that moment. I knew, I knew we were successful. Um, I had done my job.